Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. I always think of John Bunyan, uh, one of the great Puritan Baptists, who wrote Pilgrim's Progress, that for a very long time was, was considered to be mandatory reading material for every household. Um, that, that you would read the Bible, and then second only to the Bible would be Pilgrim's Progress. And at the end of Pilgrim's Progress, uh, the last hurdle, there were many challenges and difficulties along the way, but the last hurdle that Christian, the protagonist in this story, has to face is a river. That standing before him as, as he's traversed all of these different challenges, there's only one more thing that lies before him and his final destination of the celestial city, representative of heaven. And the one thing standing before him that is separating him from the celestial city is a river. And the river is symbolic of death. And his contemporary, by this time, he had one main brother in this journey named Faithful, who actually got to uh, have a shortcut to the celestial city. Um, He got to get there a little bit quicker, but it was still difficult. He got there because he was martyred. He was killed at Vanity Fair. Um, So then Christian uh, ends up having another partner in this journey of the Christian faith, namely Hopeful. And as they finally are are there at the last leg of the race, with the river separating them from the celestial kingdom, uh, they begin to go through the river. and, And Hopeful, as he's going through the river, the water is only up to his ankles, maybe his shins at certain parts. Uh, This would be a picture of dying in virtuous hope, meaning that that as he's going through death, through judgment, uh, that he does not waver in his faith, that he keeps his eyes set on Christ, the author and finisher of his faith, and he is marching through the river as, as though it was a puddle on a sidewalk. And then Christian, on the other hand, uh, the river is um, tumultuous and, and there are waves going up over his head at certain parts. He, he can't even see the celestial city any, anymore. And he's crying out to his friend, hopeful, help me, help me. I can't see. And hopeful the whole time is next to him, encouraging him and charging him, reminding him of Christ's promises. When when. Christian can't see over the river when his head from time to time dunks under the surface of the water and the celestial city has vanished from his view. Hopeful reminds him of the promises of God. Hopeful shores up Christian's faith. He reminds him of of his assurance of salvation. And he reaches out his hand and helps pull him to the other side of the shore. And this isn't to say that Christian was not, in fact, a Christian. He does make it to the celestial city. He does make it across the river. But it is to say that in the Christian life, there are varying degrees of faith. Christian did not have no faith. He had some faith. And his faith began to waver at the moment of his death. Some people will die in virtuous hope. And some people will begin to doubt the promises of God. In the very end, some will wonder and doubt on their deathbed, is Christ sufficient? Is all of this true? And in those moments, that's why we need brothers and sisters in Christ who can come and remind us of God's promises. I've heard many stories of Christians uh, in their final hours of life as they're breathing their last breaths on their deathbed, being surrounded by friends and family members, loved ones, fellow Christians, fellow saints who are just reading to them the Psalms, reading to them from the Gospel of John, uh, singing hymns over them so that they're dying while submersed in Scripture from the people that they love. The point is that no Christian gets to skip death No Christian gets to skip judgment, but Christians are promised that we will be given safe passage by being sealed up in Christ through the judgment. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Thanks for sticking around. I've got an important announcement to make. That's the Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference 2023. 
May 5th, 6th, and 7th, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Theonomy and Postmillennialism. We've got the speakers that we've already had lined up. That's Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Dr. Gary DeMar, non-doctor Pastor Joel Webin. But we also have a bonus speaker, and that is Dale Partridge from Real Christianity. Perhaps you've heard of him. If not, you should start listening to his podcast. It's fantastic. Dale Partridge is going to be joining our team. We're going to have live panels on Friday night and Saturday night where you'll be able to write in questions and get them answered. We're also going to have a catered barbecue Texas style barbecue meal on Friday that's a part of your registration fee. All that is covered. So you need to get that. This is how you do it. Go and register right now at rightresponseconference.com. Again, that's rightresponseconference.com. God bless.